Okay, so we're gonna have a little bit of a conversation now around how do we raise and help our kids to um, engage with church and that church feels like home. I would also like to just maybe unpack at the start here, what do we mean by church? Because I can guarantee that most people who are watching this and maybe the moment we mention church, they, they maybe think a Sunday, a Sunday service, don't they? Um, but what is church? Go on, Gareth. <laughs> Unpack church for us. How long have you got? Oh, dear me. I mean, church is about um, being a community who um, are coming together. Um, so we're connected, but where Jesus is at the centre. So it, if it's helpful to remember, it's a, it's a Christ-centred, connected community. And I guess that's so important, isn't it, that we have that community because... You know, as parents, sometimes we, we can feel as though the whole responsibility... I mean, it, it, we, we have to take responsibility for raising our, raising our kids um, and, and helping to foster their, their connection with God and, yeah. and all of that. But it's a huge weight at times, isn't it? But I guess when we know yeah. that our kids are also connected with a wider family, a wider community that's yeah. Christ-centred as well, that can help in the whole process of raising our kids and our families to ultimately get to a point where they're loving, at, loving the neighbour and they're reaching out and engaging with the world. What I love about that kind of definition of church is connection is there, is actually so often we make the goal understanding or knowledge and those, great, those are great things, it's good to know about things but the reality is the goal is connection, connection with Jesus, connection with our Heavenly Father mm. and connection with our church family. So actually, when we make connection the goal, and whether it's in church, whether it's at home, everything we're doing is building towards that goal. So the goal doesn't become just the Sunday morning gathering. The goal becomes, how are we connecting with Jesus? How are we connecting with one another? Actually, I see our role as the wider church family, whether that's me and my young children, or my friends with our children, or the grandma in our church. That actually we are all looking at how we can help overcome the hurdles. So one of those hurdles is time. So it may look as if church may look a little bit different for some families. It may look as if gathering together on a Friday evening and actually being outdoors and making the most of the outdoor moments. The great thing is when we make Jesus the connection, the goal, that actually whenever we gather together, there can still be worship moments, there can still be fellowship moments. And it's just looking at how we help overcome some of those hurdles. Um, for compassion, it's in two ways. One, it um, actually both benefits, you know, the children. One, it benefits them by encouraging them, you know, to find this safe place for them to go and to communicate, you know, to, to, to worship, to connect with others in their local community. You know, school doesn't last forever, but because we always have breaks in between schools, but the church is always there. So even during, for example, school breaks, this is still as an ongoing as well. And Compassion, um, we, we provide the necessary tools and we equip the local churches to be able to function well as this connecting community within, as in their local community. And the other aspect of it is in doing this, quite a few of them actually, they discover their calling or their purpose, I don't know if I should call it calling, you know. Mm -hmm. We have different testimonies of compassion graduates that have, you know, the true this, as in through the different activities that they've, as in encountered while in the program, that they've been able to, you know, to, to pick and to, to choose their life work, you know. We have, I can, we have a guy called Richmond from Uganda, like he was, in fact, his background, let me just share it briefly, he was eight years old when his father was murdered and um, because of that they lost their home himself and his mom and his siblings they lost their home but you know by that time shortly after that he got sponsored by a 15 year old girl and he got engaged in the program so he had to go back to school and um, of course being in the program he got to participate you know in all these activities and through that apart from you know him being there that brought back the hope that he already had lost, you know, about him having any future. He also discovered that he has a passion for teaching. So now he's a grown man, he's, <laughs> he's in his, I think in his middle or late thirties, and already he's teaching other and training other young pastors, equipping them in the word of God, you know, in that local community. How do we go about 
that then? And how do we prioritize that? How do we uh, encourage our kids to engage in those types of communities? I think firstly, we fundamentally believe that life with Jesus at the center is a life that is the is, has got the best foundation to thrive. Um, you know, one of the wonderful things about compassion I, I, I love and, and care for the family for that matter is that, is that they want to create, they're organisations that want to create environments for children to thrive, for families to thrive where Jesus is at the centre. And that's what the local church is about. The local church is about creating contexts where, where children, families, adults, all, all generations can thrive in their relationship with Jesus. You know, life in all of its fun, fullness, John 10, 10. And, and, and as, as Gaz said, you know, one of the hurdles of that is time. So you've got to, you've got to flip that round and create time. What, what are the contexts that we can create that, that don't sort of almost take, um, you know, take away from a child or take away from a family, but, but add to? And so, you know, my wife and I, just the other day with our son, we were just out for a walk. And we were just out for a family walk, just the three of us. And... Uh, and we, we, we just, my wife and I just said to each other, this would be a great place for church, wouldn't it? You know, we've got, we've, let's, let's just call the church for a picnic. And let, you know, whatever, whatever age, you know, just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll walk to this, to this forest and there's this great clearing here and we'll just be family together. And that's family in, in the fullest sense of Jesus church family of all ages, you know, single and um, married and, you know, perhaps single again, you know, what, 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 whatever situation people find themselves in, that there's always a place of welcome and you know, you know, one of the things that, that we believe as a family and we believe at our, our church is that church is about being home. And, 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 it's, and so it's, cr- it's creating those safe contexts, whether it is a picnic in a public place or whether it is in a, in a, in a church hall or whether it's in a, in a, in a family home, it's those safe contexts where, th- where, where lives grow, where, where lives thrive. And that only happens when we're being intentional about Jesus being the center of that. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I know that Compassion does um, as part of the way that it delivers its programs is that every, every project, every Compassion project is church-based and that it's about being part of that church community. Why is that so important? Um, we deliver, like you said, our project through church. In fact, in Togo alone, we partner with over 298 churches. And the reason is because in those local communities, this church, they represent like a center of stability in that local environment. So they create this um, sense of stability, of love, of acceptance, where the children can go to and, you know, experience, you know, and have this experience. Because we're also Christ-centered as well. They also get to experience the love of God, you know, in different ways, you know, how God loves you and how, you know, you use that love as well, you extend it as well, you know, to others. And that also kind of translate into them discovering, you know, their purpose and their calling. It goes, you know, being able to, let me say, overcome poverty in every sense, you know. Physically, yes, you have the shelter and the food, but also internally, you know, you have that renewed sense of hope and then, you know, there is a purpose for you, there is a purpose for your life, you know. So that is why we deliver um, our projects through the churches. Church is a fantastic place that families get to do things together. So we get to uh, worship with our children. We get to pray with our children. And sometimes church is a great place for that to start, Mm -hmm. for our children to first see us worshiping, or we get to serve other people with our children. And I know there's moments where our children go off to kids' church or Sunday school, and that's fantastic. But how do we also get to love our neighbor together? And church is often a great vehicle where we get to do some of those things first. And so often for younger children especially, The way they see church is often how they perceive God. So if they feel they can belong in church, they'll know that they belong with God. And I know as they get older, they figure that out. But I look at my five-year-old and she loves being in church. And when she walks out of that place on a Sunday morning, she's praying to Jesus. She's like, she's um, just so kind of getting that actually she belongs in God's family. But that actually started in church, that she realised that it's not just mum and dad's church or nan and granddad's church, it's actually her church, she belongs. And I think that's something that we can obviously consider, isn't it, for our own kids and the importance of getting them involved in that 
in our own local yeah, church yeah. communities so that they have that rubbing off on each other, that they're kind of spending time with people outside of their own little family unit, the wider family, to be able to sort of unpack and see what other people are involved with, what's their calling, what, what role are they playing, what career is that person involved in, what could this be, and our own kids also being exposed to that and hopefully in that process stumbling across what their future could look like. Yeah, great.